Jacob Kirkbride, SAFC Fan TV, and it's it's got to a stage where it's it's reached the lowest of the low now. Final score this afternoon, Sunderland nil, bottom of the table side, Wigan Athletic one, and it it, it just feel like it, right now I'm I'm shocked for words, and the only way to describe it is it feels like the club's dying to be honest from from top to bottom and. I want to make this very clear. There is two men that are very much responsible for the state that the club is in right now. Stuart Donald and Charlie Meffin. Disgrace how you've let this football club turn out to be what it is now. Unacceptable, spineless, players on the pitch with no quality. We're relying on someone like Ada McGeady, 34 years of age, to come back in who has hardly had a kick all, not had a kick all season to basically come in and just inject a tiny bit of quality in that squad because none of these players can show that at all. Useless as far as I'm concerned. And Lee Johnson, he's walking into a very, very tough job. Sean, we're going to start with you. Um, and uh, he, must, he must have uh, balls of steel because I'll tell you something now, them players were absolutely rubbish today. I mean, you know, you, you, players should be proud to play for Southern Football Club, and you know, today playing bottom of the team, Wigan, Wigan, bottom of the bottom of the, you know the bottom of the league. That won them in fourteen games. And what are we do, Sunderland? We're fucking giving the you know giving the opportunity to win the game. We are we are absolutely fucking awful. Us like rubbish, we are. And like, do you know what? As Jacob just said there, this club is rotten to the core. And you've got Sam and Pants and Stuart, Stuart Donald. Them two, can f- they want to fuck off out of our club and sell the club, not changing shares. Not switching chairs and staying st- st- in some capacity. They want to fuck off and get out of our club because they've done enough damage. They've done far too much damage. They need to get out now. Not these stuff like soft air, air switching the shares. They need to get out of our club. They need to set- sell it to somebody who's ambitious, somebody who can take the club forward because obviously they can't. They've done enough damage. They've brought their non league mentality to this club. And you know what I mean? They've brought some crap players as well. The players are not exempt, man. The players are absolutely gutless and rubbish. You would think New Magic coming in. Right, there's a chance for the players to go, oh, do you know what, new manager, let's give it a go. Now, first 10 minutes, all right, after that, nothing. We could, we, we kind of break teams down. Teams come up here, they get a goal, and they just stick all 10 men behind the ball, and we can't, we've got to learn to break teams down. We've got to learn as well that we're the biggest players at the Premier League, and that when teams come up here, the steam of lights, it's their cup final. We need to adapt to that, because if we don't, we're going to stay in this division for a very long time. But Donald wants to fuck off out of our club, and so is Sam Pants as well. The, the, the toxic and they've ruined our club. Them two are just, you know, since them come in, what, look what's happened. Look what's happened to our club. They've bought mediocre players, they've made wrong decisions, they've done this damage. They need to get out, end off. I mean, Michael, it's, it's got to a stage now where it's becoming that toxic. Something, something needs to be done here. I mean, fans week in, week out are paying £10 to watch performances like that. It's all playing and sailing, like up in the tempo because a new manager's come in. But it's about results, especially when it, you're in a league like this. Wigan didn't, cl- didn't care at all about how much quality they showed in their game today. Once they got that first goal, they were happy to defend for the rest of the game. And fair play not fair play to them. They managed to get all three points. Just like Sean said, put 10 men behind the ball, have a solid defensive unit, and they got... They got what they deserved, to be honest. Yeah, agreed. I, I think that, um, like I keep going on about, we get, why give them something to hang on to? Why not just keep a clean sheet and make it 10 times easier for yourselves? Like, you know, whatever people think of the squad, the defence definitely is underperforming because at the start of the season, we were taking responsibility with relative ease against harder opposition than Wigan as well, I want to add. So, but what, but yeah, like we started all right first 10 minutes or so, but. Once, if you're not going to take responsibility both in defence and attack in the game, you're, you're pretty much on a hiding to nothing. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to go on a full-on uh, swearing rant like Sean did. I did enough of that on the live stream, but um, he's right. Like it's, 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 it's unacceptable. It's completely unacceptable. And like for me, um, even, even, even if you go along with the theory that the squad isn't good enough, that's fine. It's your opinion. In my opinion, it's down to standards. In my opinion, and it, and it has been that way for years and years and years. We've allowed the standards to drop to the point where. We're looking for positives in a 1-1 draw, get home to Burton Albion. We're looking for, oh, well, we drew 2-2 with Rochdale and 1-1 Bristol Rovers. Hey, but look, at least we didn't lose. 
you know, that's the that's the mentality it feels like we've got at the moment. Well, well done, lads. You just got beat today. So, and yeah, and by the way, actually, in some respects, I'm actually quite happy for Wigan, given what they've gone through in recent months. I think yes. they do deserve a little bit of a break. Certainly uh, a lot more than we do anyway. We're absolutely, we're, we're, a lot of the players, I thought, well, I was going to say cowardly, but that's probably a bit harsh. But I think a lot of players there just didn't take responsibility. And it's exactly the same thing again. Take responsibility, to, you know, make the right decisions in key areas of the game. And I just felt like a lot of the players just, I don't know whether it was just a lot of the players thought, oh, it's Wigan, you know, bottom of the league. It's like, well, if you have that attitude, then you're definitely not going to win games. And for Lee Johnson going into a tough job, it's that sort of mentality that drives me nuts. Why should Sunderland have to be a tough job? Obviously, every job is going to be tough, but Sunderland should be regarded as one. Of, Sunderland should be regarded as one of the best jobs in the country. That's not delusional, and, and people can fire that at me if they want. That's up to them. They've got their own opinion. More than fine. Fair, feel free to disagree with us. But for me, I'm, I'm, I'm just bored of it. I'm bored of not keeping clean sheets. I'm bored of the same old no intensity style of play. I'm sick of the standards being dropped to the point where this is deemed acceptable because it's not. Um, but well, well done, Wigan. They deserve the three points, wanted it more than we did, and that's that. And actually, yeah, hope they stay up because their fans deserve something to shout. Well, something to shout about. That's not success for them, really. But yeah, they deserve something to not go wrong for them. I mean, was it the the game itself? We started with a high press. We were playing a lot of high tempo in the game. The movement looked good. But even when it comes to the top end of the pitch now, people especially on social media, can talk about Griggs changed, he's done this, he's improved this game, his movement off the ball is good. It's getting to a stage now where you're sick of like giving Will Grigg these, only give the man praise if he puts the ball in the back of the net. And second half of that game, he was taken off personally, I think, because he went missing in the game. And yet, I know we weren't putting in enough crosses into the box. And that's sort of Denver Hume in the first half, for me, didn't do enough. Mm -hmm. to burst that extra yard of pace to get to the byline and put the decent balls into the box. He was taken off. It was, it was because of an injury. Callum McFanzine, for me, was no better. I'm sorry. He's just... Um, I don't think we have a decent person on that left-hand side playing for us at the moment. And with Lyndon Gooch and Luke O'Nine, who are going to be out for a oh, well, decent yeah. amount of time, it's, it's worrying signs. We've got no quality coming from the whip unless... You play Aidan McGeady, but that's the worrying thing. Aidan McGeady's now um, coming towards the later stage of his career. It's resulted to put in so much pressure on him as the rest of the season goes along to keep him fit if we're going to stand any chance of promotion. And it shouldn't have come to that. And that's where it comes to the recruitment in the summer. Phil Parkinson, yeah, I will say, was not backed at all by Stuart Donald and Charlie. Yeah. And it's resulted to this. This is what you get. And... Fans paying money for the streams. Something needs to be done now because it's getting borderline unacceptable now. It's just, what what can we do, honestly? Because if fans were allowed in that ground, I'll tell you what, it would be a toxic place toxic. to be. Toxic. Absolutely toxic. Where, where does this football club go from here? And I will wish Lee Johnson all the best he can to get a tune out of them players because some of those players, yeah, I, I will say it now, but it... it it's hard for me to say it. Rubbish, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely rubbish. And it, it sickens me saying that because I don't want to say it, but we've been proved right. These players have not got the quality to get us out, the, out of the third tier of English football. Which in itself is embarrassing because Sullen should have the players to get themselves out of the third tier of English football and get back into the second tier. And it's not, and let's make this crystal clear. It's not like we're asking for very much, really, when you think about it. Jesus. We were in the Premier uh, and, and I know, I know people are going to, some people might interpret this the wrong way. So I'm going to make the context very clear before I say it. I'm not saying this because at the moment we deserve to be there because we do not. Let's make that crystal clear. My point, I'm, I'm saying this because it emphasizes how far we've fallen. We were in the Premier League three or four years ago, in the Premier League. And you could say, although I still believe we were underachieving in the Premier League and happy to accept fourth bottom all the time uh, as a club rather than attempt to do better. Um, we, nevertheless, that's, that's light years away from where we are now. Um, we're rotten away in the third tier of English football. And to me, it just seems like Stuart Donald and Charlie Meffin, and it, it emphasises the point completely. They bought the club to get a, a cheap shot at a payday, get, make it look like the half-giver monkeys in the first season. 
And then where have they gone afterwards? They just completely lost they, 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 interest. Somebody, completely yeah. lost interest. And, you know, from a business perspective, this is your business. This is your... I hate referring to football clubs as businesses, but this is your business. It does not bore well to be in the third tier of English football. And like you said, it's the backing of the managers. For all I think Bill Parkinson did deserve to go, he wasn't backed. We can't let Cod Kid ourselves to say he was backed. He wasn't. And part of that is down to the salary cap. And part of that is down to the salary cap. But I want to emphasise this again. Now, early in June, we knew what our fate was. Early in June, the salary cap was not implemented until the start of August. Two months. We had two months to sort out deals of good players who were available on a free. Now, if we went for them and their agents blocked off the moves for whatever reason, I can't have a go at them. At least they went for them. There was nothing more they could have done. But I get the impression we never bothered to do that. And you look at other clubs in the window and in the markets and all over, being proactive. Why is it Sunderland, who should be the biggest attraction of this league by some distance, in my opinion, without being disrespectful to other clubs. Because you've got Ipswich, who probably shouldn't be in this league. Pompey, who probably shouldn't be in this league. Peterborough have a good rabbit record of them getting players and getting the best out of them. I know they're struggling at the minute, like us, but you know, nevertheless, Peterborough, I fancy them to go for the uh, playoffs and top two more, a lot more than what I would us. How come we keep getting shown up by these clubs all the time? Why is it the players that we want never half the time don't seem tempted to come here? Have you seen the stadium? Have you seen the facilities? Have you seen the academy? Now, granted, yeah, we're not, we're not utilising them, to be fair. But the point is, you should be tempted to come here. Why shouldn't you? You know, and I, I'm, I'm bored of the location thing. I'm bored of the, you know, I understand if you're going for, like, championship clubs versus us and we lose out on them. That's fine. We're in the League One. That's fine. You expect that. But it, it just seems to me, like, as well, touching on your point about the players, uh, whatever our opinions are on the quality level of the players, and I want, I'll see if either of you two can answer this because it baffles me. Why is it every single time? We're fans, right? We're not part of the board. We're not part of the management coaching team. Yet, most of us, maybe not me, but most of us can see, oh, that's what we need. That's what we need. That's what we need. Who at the club watches our games? Who at the club actually watches our games and say, hmm, we might need that. Nah, we'll go for Danny Graham instead. Oh, forget, forget getting a quick pacey striker. Nah, Danny Graham is available on a free. What a great signing that would be. You know, mm. and, I'm, and I'm joking about it, but the fact is, it's, it's correct. We mm. never seem to get what we need. Why do we never do it? Can I just you answer that? Why is it we never identify what we need and do something called go get it? Why do we never do it? So I'm baffled. Well, I can understand that. I mean, Nangelia, Nangelia Blackbird striker in PSC, scored 20 plus goals. He was there for free. We didn't, you know what I mean? He was staring that. We needed somebody like that. We didn't get him, didn't get Fraser, didn't get Garbett. Didn't get uh, Madison. Where's that ball? No, no. It's obviously the, the owners of the club. They just all they want to do is um, bring the cost down, bring the cost down, bring the cost down. And like Matt has said, the salary cap, they had months in advance to, to, knew, to knew this was coming. They could have easily acted quicker. They didn't want no man. They've got no ambition. No ambition. And you can't yeah. tell me you didn't know it was coming. It must Cause... have been the worst with what happened with Barry. It has to have been. And Donald, he hasn't got a penny to scratch his ass with. So it's a case of just trying to bring the cost down, bring the cost down, even though he's brought everything down anyway, showing the ambition, trying to fluke promotion. That's all it was. That's, that's all it was. Don't get me wrong. On one level of the spectrum, you've got Ellis Short, who spent too much money on like, meaningless things. But Donald, but Donald, just because that happened doesn't mean you're penny pinched to the max. It doesn't mean, I understand costs had to come down, and that's fair enough, but it yeah. doesn't mean you don't spend anything. It doesn't mean you don't. It doesn't mean you just penny pinch and, and spend as minimal as you possibly can on wages. I do get that to a degree, but you look at the Lyle Taylor thing two years ago. There's no way, with all due respect to Charlton, there's no way you should be picking Charlton over Sunderland, in my opinion. So no. as but Charlton will have a have a well have a good manager and have, probably have a better squad than us, and will probably at least be fighting to go into the championship. We're not going to bother to do that if we're not careful. Yeah. So why is it Lyle Taylor? What what why did he choose Charlton over us? Was it because of a set of a stupid goal bonus that we didn't bother? It was to a pick? Goal bonus because he said on Twitter, he said on Twitter, he uh, called John uh, Stuart Donald up and he says, "Oh, and he wanted a, sco a scoring bonus. Donald wouldn't give him it." So there you, you go. Know, are they gone? It just it says everything. It says absolutely everything, and I'm I'm just sick of it. Like, why are we, you know? I know that you say, "Oh, it's Sunderland." Well, the fact is, no, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be just we're Sunderland. We should be expecting more than this. We deserve more answers. In my we opinion, don't deserve why, this at the moment. Why, yeah. why why have we allowed ourselves to get to this low point? Why has the why instead of taking responsibility and doing things the right way, we always seem to, we always seem to get everything wrong and. 
Jacob, what do you think? Because obviously we've took a lot of your thunder at the moment. Well, um, I'm, I'm just shocked for words right now. Right now, I'm just sick to death of this club, to be honest. I just need a good night's sleep tonight just to refresh my thoughts on the game. But um, we're going to end this video. Um, we're going to quickly go to Sean. What message would you give Lee Johnson as he's about to take on definitely the toughest job of his managerial career? <laughs> Well, I wish him, I wish him all the best. I mean, like you say, he's come to our beloved club. Unfortunately, he's coming at a, a very toxic and horrible time. I mean, the, the fan, I mean, the fans and the, and the owners are them being never been this distance. But that's down to one man. It's Donald. He's obviously yeah. Uh, he's absolutely, you know, he's he's ruined this club. You know, he's, he's he just needs to go, man. And like, I, I don't know how this must have been. Nate Johnson. I think Nate Johnson's a good manager. Um, and I wish him the best, like you see. I hope he can, you know, get us out of this division and stabilise us in the championship, as that's what his job, his job will be. But if it's Donald who's still going to be here, will Donald back him? Definitely not. Um, I'm just lost for words, I mate. Mean, it's just like the thing about the deal, I'll just quickly see it. I mean, I don't mind, but well, maybe he likes losing, but it's like when you lose and, you, and players are just not giving a shit. You know what I mean? That's what hurts me the most. Do you know what I mean? When the players are just like, I don't know, you know what I mean? Oh, I that, that's, a, that, that's what bothers me. Like, you know what I mean? Professional footballers should be given their all for the for the for the, for the club, you know what I mean? for the team, and they're not they're not doing it. Underperforming, they're not. You know what I mean? It's just, it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. No. Putting the players, the whole club is toxic at the minute. Everything about it, it's all toxic, mm. and it needs fucking sorting out before it's too late. Because this club is going to be in this league for a long time. If Donald doesn't go, Meffin doesn't go, Sartori, all of them out. Get some players, new players in, Jan in their January. Investment. That's what this club needs right now. Good luck, Lee Johnson. You need yeah. us. Yeah. As well, like remember, don't just don't just view this club as a chance to make money. Remember how privileged you all are to be in this position. Just remember that. Yeah, I, I absolutely, and um, especially the, the experienced players should definitely take more responsibility compared to some of the oh. younger lads and inexperienced players we've got in that squad at the moment. I feel sorry for for them uh, as well, but it's just shocking to see. Anyway, guys, um, I hope you've enjoyed today's live stream. Um, not so much the match that you had to go through. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. You're watching SCFC Fan TV and this very difficult time for Sunderland Football Club. All we can say is keep the faith and we wish new manager Lee Johnson all the best of luck. Good luck, mate. Good news.